Brazilians are known worldwide for their creativity, especially in music, art, and of course, football. But can you think of a Brazilian invention that has changed your life? Many ingenious Brazilian minds are responsible for inventions around the world that have had a significant impact on our daily lives, and you probably didn't even know it. This lack of awareness is largely due to the fact that many of these inventors have never received the recognition that they truly deserve. And that's why we chose this topic for the first episode of our new series, The Brazilian Report's Top 10. Today, Brazilian Inventions. We've curated a selection of 10 inventions developed by Brazilians and inventions that have undoubtedly made an impact on your life. So grab your abaianas, your pão de queijo, your caipirinha or your bowl of açaí and join us. Hot Air Balloon In the 18th century, a Brazilian Jesuit priest named Bartolomeu de Guzmão was certain that civilization could achieve more and that there was only one thing holding us back, the ability to fly. He designed the Passarola, a forerunner of the hot air balloon. The purpose of the Passarola was to serve as a strategic messenger vessel. In 1709, John V of Portugal decided to finance his project and a demonstration was held in the presence of John V and Queen Maria Anna of Austria. The event was witnessed by the Italian Cardinal Michelangelo Conti, two members of the Portuguese Royal Academy of History, a Portuguese diplomat and a historian. The event drew attention to the invention throughout Europe. The London Daily Universal Register later reported that the inventor was able to lift himself off the ground with his prototype. Also in 1709, the Brazilian priest wrote a text entitled A Short Manifesto for Those Who Do Not Know That It Is Possible To Sail Through The Element Of Air. He also provided designs for a manned airship. Not a bad idea, but we'll come to that one later. Trophy Lifting Okay, so we're talking about Brazil, so it's fair to say that we can't talk for more than a minute without mentioning football, so here we go. You know when athletes lift trophies above their heads after becoming champions? Yep, that's a Brazilian invention. After winning the 1958 World Cup, Brazil's captain, Ilderaldo Bellini, was parading around the field with the trophy when one of the photographers present asked him to lift it above his head to get a better shot. And the rest is history. For the next four World Cups that Brazil won, and all the World Cups that other nations won as well, the captains imitated the same gesture. And today, it has become commonplace in a wide range of sports. Free kick spray and electronic subs board. Staying with football, besides giving the word Pelé, multiple world titles and countless famous teams, Brazil has also made its mark with some practical improvements to the game. You know that little spray that referees use to mark where a wall should stand before a free kick? That's Brazilian. While watching a match and seeing the defensive wall encroaching on the taker, Brazilian inventor Heine Alemanyi set to work on a vanishing spray that would be able to mark the grass temporarily, keeping the players in line. First tested in a junior championship, it quickly became a success and was adopted Brazil-wide and then by FIFA. However, despite being recognised as a legitimate creator of the free kick spray, Alemanyi sued FIFA and won when they were convicted of bad faith and misappropriation by Brazilian courts and they could have to pay him over 200 million reais. Another Brazilian improvement to the sport has a similar story. The inventor, Eduardo Lamboglia, was annoyed that referees had a hard time displaying the numbers of players who were being substituted because at the time it was used with a wooden board with number plates. So in 1996, Eduardo came up with the idea of an electronic LED board to display the numbers. Although it was an expensive solution and not affordable for local federations in the late 1990s, the board was gradually adopted locally and made its worldwide debut at the 1998 World Cup. Not bad. Instagram. Photography is by no means a Brazilian invention, but the most popular way of sharing photos is. Sao Paulo-born Michel Krieger co-founded Instagram with Kevin Systrom back in 2010 after the pair met while attending Stanford University. And in 2012, Facebook bought the app for no less than $1 billion. Electronic voting machines. Despite its significant inequality, Brazil is a highly digital nation. The country is known for its prominent online presence, widespread smartphone usage and rapid adoption of digital services. And when it comes to democracy, the scenario is no different. 
A vast country with infrastructure challenges, inequality issues and a history of voter fraud, Brazil decided to leap into the digital age and make its electoral system electronic. The story began in 1989 when Judge Carlos Prudencio implemented the first operational electronic voting machine in the southern Brazilian city of Brusque. The first model to be used nationwide was built between 1995 and 1996 and was further optimised in 1997 to the current model in use. And despite the mistrust expressed by the Brazilian far right, the electronic voting machine has proven its security. The system works offline, transmitting information only through a private network managed by the electoral courts. It has been tested against hacking attacks and has received multiple updates and security enhancements between elections. The electronic voting system withstood former President Jair Bolsonaro's prolonged campaign of distrust and even an actual hacking attempt. And this attempt was allegedly orchestrated by the notorious fraudster Walter Delgacci, reportedly at the request of the then president, as he claimed during a congressional inquiry. The personal stereo before the Walkman. If you ever owned an iPod, a Discman or a Walkman, you have Brazil to thank. In 1972, Andreas Pavel developed the Stereo Belt, a portable device that played music from cassette tapes. The concept was patented in Italy in 1977, followed by patents in the US, Germany, the UK and Japan. If the idea of a Stereo Belt sounds familiar, it's probably because you've heard of it as a Walkman, which Sony began marketing after 1979. After a legal battle between the two parties, Sony agreed to pay limited royalties to Pavel, only for sales in Germany. However, the company refused to recognise him as the inventor of the device. In the 1980s, both parties reached an undisclosed financial settlement, which the European press reported was approximately $10 million. For Sony, this was a favourable deal, considering that over 400 million Walkmans were sold worldwide. Automatic transmission using hydraulic fluid. Automatic transmission was invented by Alfred Munro in Canada in 1921, but Munro's invention used compressed air and lacked power, which prevented it from finding widespread commercial application. Eleven years later, Brazilians José Braz Araripe and Fernando Lely Lemos developed the first automatic transmission that used hydraulic fluid. The duo sold the prototype to General Motors, which introduced it in the 1940 Oldsmobile when it was named the Hydromatic Transmission. And during World War II, GM installed the technology in tanks and called it Battle Proven. Affordable Mini X-rays for Tuberculosis Dr. Manuel Gias de Abreu, a Brazilian physician and pulmonologist, faced a serious challenge. With limited resources, how would he be able to screen thousands of patients suspected of having tuberculosis? So Dr. Abreu invented a new technique, mass miniature radiography, also known as chest photofluorography. This method of photofluorography allowed mass screening for tuberculosis using a miniature photograph of the chest x-ray screen. It was first developed in 1936. Miniature mass radiography, or MMR, was rapidly adopted in many countries and was widely used in the 1950s. For example, when tuberculosis prevention laws were enacted in Brazil and Japan, MMR screening became mandatory for the population, with participation reaching up to 60% of the population. The procedure was largely discontinued in the 1970s due to the significant reduction in the overall incidence of tuberculosis the diminished benefit-to-cost ratio and concerns about exposure to ionising radiation, especially in children. Although no longer in use, MMR played a pivotal role in tuberculosis prevention worldwide and remains a simple and valuable method to prevent disease transmission in certain scenarios involving large population groups at high risk for tuberculosis. Anti-venom serum The Brazilian physician Vital Brasil is known internationally for his discovery of the polyvalent anti-venom serum, which has been used since 1903 to treat venomous snake bites. He's also credited with being the first to develop anti-scorpion and anti-spider serums in 1908 and 1925 respectively. 
Vital Brasil also founded the Butantan Institute in Sao Paulo, a research center dedicated to toxicology and the study of venomous animals. In 2000, another Brazilian, veterinarian Rosalvo Guidolin, developed a powdered version of the serum, and this innovation increased its shelf life and greatly improved its storage. The Airplane Now, the top entry on our list may cause the American viewers to skip this video in frustration, so that's why we've put it at the end. But please, hear us out. Brazilian aviator Alberto Santos Dumont is considered the true pioneer of air travel and the real inventor of the airplane. In 1906, he flew his 14 Beast plane on the outskirts of Paris and is widely credited with being the first person to achieve flight. However, this distinction is not shared in the United States, where the credit goes to the Wright brothers. The international aviation experts that are on Team Santos Dumont claim that the Wright brothers' invention used a launch rail to propel their aircraft, making it something closer to a complicated glider. In contrast, the 14 Beast flew a distance of 200 feet entirely on its own. During the opening ceremony of the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, the long-standing debate was revived as Santos Dumont was celebrated. While the Americans remained unconvinced, prominent international organizations such as the France-based FAI support the Brazilians' view. Did you enjoy watching this video? Let us know what you think in the comments. And remember to like and subscribe to our channel and share it with your friends and co-workers. And if you like our videos, you should consider supporting our work by subscribing to The Brazilian Report, choosing any plan for just $1 for the first month. As a subscription-based business, readers are very important for us. But if you're not thinking of subscribing to The Brazilian Report just yet, there is another way to support our work. Quality journalism takes a lot of hard work. And coffee, lots of coffee. And you can support us by donating a cup of coffee on our Buy Me A Coffee page. And you can even get exclusive content and perks by becoming a member of our Buy Me A Coffee community. Join now and get a special shout out on our Explaining Brazil podcast, a question answered by our newsroom about Brazil or Latin America every month, or even our special Brazilian culture newsletter available on our Brazilian Insider membership tier. For us, it's not just about coffee, so go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Brazilian report and support our work. It's really important for us. Thank you. You can find links and references in the description of the video. See you in the next video.